everybody, we're here at Gen Con 2016, and I am joined by one of my favorite all-time interview <laughs> guests ever, Steve Horvath, Chief Marketing Officer. We're going to be talking about Star Wars Destiny, we're going to be talking about organized play at Fantasy Flight Games, and a bunch of other things. So what you may not know is Steve is, outside of me, the biggest Star Wars fan I know, and Star Wars Destiny wait, hit. Wait, wait a minute, outside of you? Well, I, I, I don't have a scale to really like know which one's more of a fan. Okay. But All right. I, would, I would say if anybody in the world is possibly more of a fan, it's you. We'll discuss this more later after the interview. We will, we will see who the force is stronger with. All right, so you guys announced Star Wars Destiny. We did. And that was kind of a big deal. Yeah. Because it's, not only is it a new Star Wars game. It is, yeah. A card game with dice. Yeah. And it's Or collected. a dice game with cards. A dice game with cards, that's fair. So, either one. And it's collectible. It is. So let's talk about that for a minute. FFT has a range of amazing, awesome, living card yeah. games, non-collectible. And we love them. And I love them too, yeah. so that works out. But collectible, tell me about what was behind that decision. Okay. So I addressed this a little bit in the in-flight report yesterday. We've been doing, FFG created the living card game category about eight years ago. Yep. Uh, it's been very, very successful. It's one of our best growing categories. It's been very strong for us. And we've come out with a whole litany of reasons why it's very strong Absolutely. for people that that appeals to. But it turns out that's not universal appeal, right? It's just like, in, within that category, there's certain LCGs that appeal to some people and others that appeal to a different people. Sure. It turns out not all games are for all players. <laughs> As it happens. As it happens. Truth, yeah. Okay. And not all categories are for all players. Right? We've been really, really focusing on that LCG category. Sure. But we also do a, a lot of games in the board game space, miniature space, role playing game space. Well, there's another category out there that we haven't done anything with and we've ignored for the past eight years. For a while, because you, you, you have done collectible games before. We have done collectible games yeah, in the yeah. past, right? In fact, Game of Thrones started as a collectible game. Yep. So did Call of Cthulhu, all right? Now we think it's time to go back and service that, that category. We've talked a lot over the years about being very proud of having games in all of the relevant categories of the industry. Sure. That hasn't really been true, though because for a while collectibles really kind of burned out, yeah. but they've really seen a resurgence over the last several years. Yeah. And really all this means is we want to make games for as many people as we can, yeah. right? And there's a category that we're not making games for, so why not? Sure. It doesn't invalidate anything we've ever said about LCGs. For the people that don't want that collectible aspect, all of those things remain true for LCGs, sure. right? But it turns out there's a lot of people out there that love collectible games. It's so, true. So why would we not make a game for them when we've come up with something that we think is perfect? Sure. Perfect. So that's, that's it's, strong. It's, it's strong. <laughs> yes, it is. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's not a zero-sum game, sure. right? We still make all these other games along with LCGs. Why can't we do a collectible game, sure. too? And I understand it's not going to be for everybody. I get that. But that doesn't mean that it can't serve a whole group of players that want games. Sure. We've been asked for years, how come you don't do collectibles anymore? Well, the opportunity wasn't there, the timing wasn't right, it wasn't the right game, the right fit, the right situation. We have that now. It turns out there's a lot of Star Wars fans out there that want a collectible game. We it's, think they should have one. And, you know, who can fault you, right? You guys Share make a lot love. of great Star Wars games, and you have miniature games, and you have card games, yep. and you have non-collectibles, now you have collectible. Yep. Uh, so, tell me, Tell me why Star Wars Destiny is significant or special. Like, what makes it... You have these collectible games that have been... The ones that are really around right now have been around for a while. Yep. It feels kind of like it's stagnated. There hasn't been too much innovation in the space. And this is quite a bit different. So what, what it makes is very it truly different. different? It is and very worth different. worth checking out. It's not, it's not the first game to have both cards and dice in it, uh, but it's the first game that, that the dice and the cards interact the way they do in it. Sure. And we feel like it's a next step in the genre. Right? So, a lot of times people in a situation like this, they're worried that perhaps the dice are going to add too much of a random factor into the game. Uh, although what's really funny in any kind of card game, you have the randomness of shuffling your deck and what are you going to draw. And there's a lot more randomness there than most card players want to admit or talk about. Right? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, but this game, 
you are rolling dice, and yes, there'll be some random elements to that, but there's so many ways you interact with the card pool as well that it it's not a randomized experience like like you might think at first blush. Sure. Right? Yeah. So so you played and you saw I hey there's cards that remove dice from the pool, there's things that let you re-roll the dice. Well, and you're never rolling an outcome. You're rolling no. an option. You're rolling an option, and because you don't resolve when you roll, it keeps this kind of interactivity like you haven't seen before in a lot of that. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the really unique things about the game is it is action, 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 action. Yes. You take one, I take one, you take yes. one. It's and not... it's hard for people sometimes to get their head around it in the beginning. Yeah. Right. Um, because even when I was first learning the game, I kept wanting to reserve, like, okay, I'm, da I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, no, wait, no, I, uh, no I'm not. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to go, so and then down. I'm going to activate this and activate that, yeah, right? Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's really fun. And I feel like it, as I've been playing the game, it really keeps me involved in the game through the whole game, yeah. right? Some, some games, you take your turn, then you wait for your opponent to take their turn. Then here, I, I played those games. <laughs> here, while they're taking their turn, I'm really involved because whatever the outcome of those, that, that dice Directly roll is, what they do, right, or what card thing. they play, yeah. you know, I have to see how am I going to respond and I'm trying to anticipate, yeah. right? And then they have their results, they've played their cards, whatever the situation is, you now I'm going to respond to that and try to do something to make the game play at my tempo instead of their tempo. Sure. And there's, there is the like flow and timing of the game is, yes. is really something. And so what's happening is, you're wrestling or competing with your opponent to dictate the tempo of the match. You want them to play at your ear tempo, they want you to play at theirs, theirs. Yeah, yeah. right? And you're gonna do that not just with cards, but you're gonna do that with the dice too and the way they interact with each other. So n neither one of them on their own is dictating the game, but it's how they come together is gonna dictate the game. Sure, yeah. so, super cool. So. Uh, you announced at the in-flight that it would get it would be a part of the World Championship next May. So Star, yes. Star Wars Worlds, essentially, uh, yes. happening next May. I don't know what it is. It's not called that, sure. but the Worlds that is all the Star Wars games. Yes. Uh, Destiny will be there. Uh, the game's set to release in November. Yes. So that should be exciting. Uh, yes. Speaking of organized play Seek and Morris, updates, if you can please report we have, to the uh, you announced the in-flight, the Morris Open Series, the yeah, for X-Wing. You did it this year. You had eight mm -hmm. tournaments. The winner of each of those tournaments was flown to Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. A big finale, big winner, crazy thing. You're doing it again. Yeah. Tell me about about what's going to be happening in the next Open Series. Anything you got? Uh, sure. So this has been wildly successful. Um, when I conceived of doing this, I thought it would be popular. I had no idea it'd be this popular, right? So I love to be wrong in those situations. Right, that's, right? A good, so, that's a good way to be wrong. Yes. So so it's really fantastic. Uh, I know that that in the U.S. players wanted there to be more events. Well, this next series there will be. Yep. The, so more than eight? No, there'll be eight events, but they wanted more in the U.S. last sure. year. Right? And Celebration this year is in the U.S. The celebration's in the U.S. this year, so we're going to have at least four of those events be in the U.S. Very cool. Right? Uh, we don't have the venues or the dates yet, but we will have them soon, and we'll announce them as soon as possible. Very cool. Right? And so there'll be eight, and there'll be, you know, there'll be several you know, there'll be a few across, around the world yeah. as well, too, across Europe. And uh, we'll run all of those. They'll wrap those up in March because celebration next year is in April. Yep. So it's a little accelerated this time. Oh, yeah. So we're working pretty feverishly behind the scenes. Uh, with and some, then that, that's right before Worlds. In yes, May, it is right, right that's before Worlds. a lot Worlds. of X-Wing. Yes, it is. That's a lot of X-Wing, right? So it's very exciting. Uh, the people at Star Wars Celebration really liked having the event there. Sure. So um, it'll have expanded coverage next year. Awesome. At that event. And uh, it'll be a bigger event this year because I think it's four days in Florida where it was three days yeah, in the UK, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, and best of all, I get to go this year. <laughs> so That's the best thing, right? Yes. Well, you know, maybe for me. <laughs> for you, so, it's the best thing. You know, but... Uh, all right. Uh, is there anything else before we get out of here uh, that you want to say or you want the community to know? You guys continue to add games. You're developing your system. You're evolving, changing, growing. Even here, you've had huge tournaments across the weekend, more games yep. than ever, and uh, all seems to be well. But what do you got? Well, I think in some ways I still feel like we're just getting started. We've got so many other things in the pipeline to come out with, right? Um, other types of events. 
we're already planning for the launch of Legend of the Five Rings next year next here August, at right? Gen Con, right? Um, I have some cool ideas we're, that we're discussing in the office about some opening ceremonies for that and how to, how to get people involved. That game is going to have a huge launch. You know, it's got a very, very passionate fan base. And you have a long history there. I do have a long history with that game. Yeah. Um, this is my 20th Gen Con. My first Gen Con was playing in the Day of Thunder Championships back in Milwaukee 20 years for ago. For L5R. For L5R. That's wild. Yes. So it's pretty exciting. It's very special to me yeah. to, that, that we have this game. Uh, and I think it's going to be the biggest launch we've ever done for an LCG. I believe you. So be here next year. Gen Con 2017. Yeah. 2017. Not watching on the cameras. Be here. <laughs> Physically here. Physically here. Awesome. Because it's going to be pretty awesome. I, I 100% believe yeah. in what you're saying. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining you. us. Thank you guys for watching. I'm the bigger Star Wars fan. Yeah. We'll see about that. <laughs> We'll have plenty more Gen Con 2016 coverage. Stay tuned, and we'll see you on the next video.